Uh, in the last video segment, I introduced you to a mnemonic device known as Eli the Iceman to help you remember the phase relationship between voltage and current for inductors and capacitors. So I'll try to explain in this video lesson what exactly we mean by Eli the Iceman, and you can decide whether or not that's a helpful mnemonic. So uh, I'm going to give you some review here and just remind you that uh, generator... sends current through a circuit and that current oscillates so we can describe the current using a function current equals some maximum value times cosine omega t okay uh, well let's see Ohm's law tells us that the voltage across a resistor should be equal to current times resistance so that means voltage across the resistor is equal to maximum current times R times cosine omega t. Voltage across an inductor is equal to L di dt. So we get at any instant the voltage across an inductor would be equal to negative omega L I sine omega T. The voltage across a capacitor is equal to charge divided by capacitance and we can find charge by taking the integral of I dt. So we find that at any given instant the voltage across a capacitor is equal to I divided by omega c times sine omega t. So we can make graphs of all of these. A graph of current versus time has a maximum value of capital I, a minimum value of negative capital I, and oscillates sinusoidally between those max and minimum values. What about this graph? The graph for voltage across a resistor. Well, it's also a graph of cosine. So the voltage across the resistor versus time has a maximum value of capital IR, a minimum value of negative capital IR, and oscillates sinusoidally between those values. How about a graph of voltage across the inductor? It looks like that's going to be a graph of negative sign. And it looks like it has a maximum value of omega L I and a minimum value of negative omega L times I. And lastly, a graph of the voltage across the capacitor. That's also a quantity that oscillates. It looks like that should be a graph of positive sign. With a maximum value of I divided by omega C a minimum value of negative I divided by omega C and oscillates in between. So voltage across the capacitor, voltage across the inductor, and voltage across the resistor are all sinusoidal, but they're not in phase with one another. In fact, the phase relationship between the voltage across the inductor and the voltage across the capacitor looks like when one of them is most negative, the other is most positive, and vice versa. They are 180 degrees out of phase. Now the relationship between the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the inductor, it looks like when one of them is most negative, the other one is zero.
and when the voltage across the inductor is zero, that's when the voltage across the resistor is most negative, and so on. So those are 90 degrees out of phase. Now which one occurs first? It looks like the zero for the voltage across the inductor comes a little bit earlier in time than the corresponding zero for the voltage across the resistor. And then if we compare graphs from there on, here's a zero followed by negative values reaching the, the most negative, and here's the same zero followed by negative values reaching the most negative. So this is occurring a little later in time than the voltages for the inductor. So the voltage across the inductor is 90 degrees out of phase, and it leads the voltage across the resistor. Of course, the voltage across the resistor and the current are exactly in phase with one another. They're both just graphs of positive cosine. So the relationship between the voltage across the capacitor and the voltage across the resistor is also a 90 degree phase difference. Now let's compare. Let's pick this initial point. The voltage across the capacitor is zero, and then it's becoming its most positive value. Um, well, if we trace the graph back, at some point earlier in time back here, the voltage across the resistor would have been zero, and then it reaches its most uh, maximum value at time t equals zero. So right off the get-go, the voltage across the resistor is its most positive value and then starts to downturn. Whereas we have to wait a little bit for the voltage across the capacitor to reach its greatest maximum value and then start the downturn. So it's 90 degrees out of phase, and that voltage across the capacitor lags behind the voltage across the resistor. So that's all we mean when we say Eli the Iceman. The E in Eli means voltage, as in EMF, as in that old fashion term for voltage known as electromotive force. And so voltage comes before current for an inductor, whereas current comes before voltage for a capacitor. I don't know. Some people like that mnemonic. Others are confused by it. You decide whether or not that makes sense. Maybe the best way to make sense of all this is putting it all together in one phasor diagram. And so let's imagine the generator isn't just sending current to a resistor, not just to an inductor, but to a series loop of all three of them then whatever is true of the current at any instant, if the current's at its maximum value, then the voltage across the resistor is guaranteed to be its maximum value. If the current is at its maximum value, then you're guaranteed at that instant the voltage across the inductor and the voltage across the capacitor would momentarily be zero. So let's draw it as a phasor diagram. So if current, if we choose to express it with this sinusoidal equation, instantaneous current is max current times cosine omega t, then at time t equals zero, the current phasor projects straight down the x-axis. So instead, let's imagine at time t equals zero plus dt, just a little bit later in time then our current phasor has rotated to this point, which means the current is not at its maximum value. At a little moment later in time, the instantaneous current is smaller in magnitude than the max current, which is really just a way of saying that 
at time t equals 0 on this graph, the current is its greatest value. But just a little bit later in time, the current is slightly less than that. Okay? Eli the Iceman. Voltage across an inductor leads the current. So I draw a phaser that points this way, 90 degrees ahead of the phaser that represents the current, and that represents the voltage across the inductor. Its instantaneous value is the projection onto the x-axis. There's V subscript L. The voltage across a capacitor comes after the current, or lags the current. So the phaser that represents the voltage across the capacitor is 90 degrees behind the phaser that represents the current. And of course, the voltage across the resistor is perfectly in phase with the current. So that's a vector whose length is capital V subscript R, the red one has a length capital V subscript C, and if I put their projections onto the x-axis, that's the instantaneous value of the voltage across these circuit components. So just a little bit later in time, that very same phasor diagram would have all of its phasors pointing like this. Now the current phaser has rotated around to here. So that's like this data point on the graph hasn't quite reached 0 yet. You would have to go straight vertically to have reached 0. So here we are at another point. There's the current phaser. There's the voltage across the resistor. Eli the Iceman, the voltage across the inductor leads the current by 90 degrees. And the ice part of Eli the Iceman is a way to remember that the voltage across the capacitor lags behind the current by 90 degrees. So that right there represents the instantaneous value VL. This value is instantaneous value VC. This value is VR. And there you have it. Okay. So that's what we mean by Eli the Iceman, perhaps better illustrated with a phaser diagram. Now, in an earlier lesson, I introduced something known as the inductive reactance in a circuit. So let's look back at one of our formulas here. The voltage across an inductor is negative omega Li sine omega T. Voltage across an inductor is negative omega Li sine omega t. What about voltage across a capacitor? I divided by omega c sine omega t. Uh, voltage across a resistor is just I R cosine omega t. And this is all given that i is equal to i cosine omega t. Okay. So, in our series circuit with an inductor, a resistor, and a capacitor, uh, the resistance in ohms is just the, the value of r. Effectively, 
the inductor has something like resistance. It has a quantity that's measured in ohms. There's a relationship for an inductor between the voltage and the current. Now, the maximum voltage across an inductor, well, the biggest you ever get when you take the sine of anything is 1. So the maximum voltage across an inductor is omega L times I. So if we want, we can say inductive reactance is equal to omega times L. Then in that case, we have the voltage across an inductor is the inductive reactance times the current. This is kind of like the voltage across a resistor is R times the current. This quantity, known as reactance, is a quantity measured in ohms in just the same way resistance is measured in ohms. So likewise, if the instantaneous voltage across a capacitor is I over omega C times sine omega T, the largest value you'll ever get for sine of anything is 1, so the maximum voltage across a capacitor is I divided by omega C. So we could say that capacitive reactance is 1 over omega C. If that's the case, then we can say the voltage across a capacitor is equal to capacitive reactance multiplied by the current. And so capacitive reactance in the same way is also a quantity measured in ohms. X sub L and X sub C. Inductive reactance and capacitive reactance. Inductive reactance uh, increases with increasing frequency. Inductive reactance is omega times L. Capacitive reactance decreases with increasing frequency. There's a direct relationship between omega and inductive reactance. There's an inverse relationship between omega and capacitive reactants. That means generators that operate at really high frequencies will lead to large voltage readings across an inductor, whereas generators that operate with low frequencies have a way of putting large voltages across a capacitor. So, make note, how do we calculate inductive reactants? How do we calculate capacitive reactants? And how can a phasor diagram help make sense of the mnemonic Eli the Iceman? In our next video lesson, we'll describe how different RLC circuits will behave when driven at high frequencies, low frequencies, or better yet, at resonant frequencies. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.